Hey there, welcome to this uh, new little, I don't know, it's kind of a tutorial, but also kind of not, but today I want to show you um, some kind of little spell kit template I've been building. So in the past couple of days, weeks, no, let's say weeks, in the past couple of weeks, I have been playing around with Drizzle and Terso and with Auth using Lucia Auth, but uh, yeah, mainly with Terso and Drizzle because I wanted to learn databases for future projects and first and foremost of course for my current project Wolf Breaks, which is still not very work in progress but kind of work in progress today I want to show you the repository so this is my github go follow my github and start some of our repositories would be very cool um, because I'm building cool stuff in github so we got to do this for kids and yeah so let's actually clone this repository. I also got some kind of uses template uh, kind of thing right, right down here um, because this is kind of a template. So we can copy this URL and then go to your terminal. And I'm already on this route or not, not on the route in the correct directory, developer slash project. So let me just git clone that one and code to do slash well kit. That will open up our Visual Studio code. And we got that one, perfect. So in order to use the template, we got this env.example right here. And from this, I'm gonna create an env file and quickly copy these ones over. So I'm gonna delete that database after, but we can quickly preso db create um, to do dash video which will create a cool um, to do and we gotta do torso db show to do video to show some informations about the database which we need we first of all need this URL. Let's paste that in here. And we want we want that command here basically. Because we need a Terso auth token. Right here. That's a very long token actually. So if we npm run dev right now, oh we first need to npm install of course. Press open. We are here. Very creative to do app and we first of all got some issues. Okay. Um, because we need to migrate. So we do npm run generate. No, we can just npm run migrate. Right there. So, and let's refresh. Perfect. So, we can give this a title. For example, upload this video. Now we can press add or just hit enter. And it should create one. Or study. I still need to study biology, CS, uh, chemistry, right here. And now we can basically do some cool things. But let me actually just show you before the Drizzle Studio, which is a very cool thing. So they just added this Drizzle Studio, um, which we got right here. We got basically four fields. We got ID. Oops. We got ID, title, content, and completed. We could also call this body or something like that. I don't know. I don't care. Um, yeah, so what these are, these are the things we are, we have to find in component. No, not in components. In lib slash db. Uh, lib slash db, sorry. Um, it was very easy to kind of yeah generate that. Actually, don't need that import. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, we created this to do table. Um, if I show you the schema for t uh, code doodle, which is my blog that I'm building out currently, uh, there, the schema is a bit more complicated. Um, I'm gonna do a deep dive or kind of a video about that later on. But yeah, so this is the schema for our database. And uh, what's cool about that is it's first of all, it's kind of a one source of truth. So we got first of all, we got how the database is structured and it's type safe. 
uh, because it, the ORM, Drizzle ORM, is written in TypeScript. And so all my queries, all my CRUD, um, CRUD operations, they are type safe. Let's see this code. This project is really plain simple. So I think the most complicated thing in this whole project that I needed to kind of figure out was the form actions. Because um, especially server files were completely new for me as a kind of front-end developer. And having them was, first of all, kind of if, uh, was a first time kind of kind of confusing, but then I, I got the hang out of it. And now uh, I think I'm pretty comfortable in writing back-end TypeScript. We got all these actions right here. We got create to do, we got delete to do, we got toggle completely. So we got this uh, simple form right here. And in this form, uh, we got method post because I think almost always you need to set, or if you want to post something to the server, you of course need to specify that as post. And then we got action. And this action needs to correspond with toggle complete. And then we got class, margin bottom, blah, 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 some utility classes from Tailwind, which I love because basically this um, whole project, like I think almost all my ISVL kit projects are based on skeleton UI. And that means I have Tailwind and they're awesome components. Definitely go check them out. And... Yeah, so basically we got some utility classes and then our inputs, which hold some values. Nothing crazy going on in this uh, project with schema validation and all that stuff. Um, in CodeDoodle, there's actually a lot more going on, but I'm going to do that a deep dive on that later because I'm using Zod and Svelkit Superforms there and it's just crazy. It's very cool. And yeah, so we're basically posting a form. And then we are listing a form. Or, uh, no, what? No, we are listing all the to-dos. Um, so, yeah, in page.server.ts, we got some db functions. So, we have db, which is that one. That's a file where we define the db, the database. We got a load function, which for Svelte newbies is basically load function is that this function is going to get loaded uh, when the page gets loaded we can do cool stuff with it like checking the auth state or yeah loading these things so uh, yeah we're loading const result is await db.select which is the read statement kind of in drizzle dot from to do table and we can order by because I want to order it by something in this case the ID because the ID is one two three four um, and it's primary key so it will always get incremented and yeah we need to set this to satisfy page server load which is an auto generated type by Svelkit so then we got form actions right here which I already covered. Uh, we first of all retrieve the form data and then we get the title and the body. And again, in Svelkit Superforms, I know I could do this way simpler. I'm also using Superforms in another project. I just didn't discover it till Codoodle. So that's why I'm using traditional JavaScript for that. And I'm just getting title and content. Um, then we run await db.insert, which basically is to create um, the create method or create function. To do is table, we specify where. I think we also do it. It's like, in my opinion, it's a bit confusing. Some, sometimes you need to specify this from, and then sometimes you don't need to. Or, well, maybe here it would be insert at, not from. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, so then we got values and then we can insert basically these values and completed is always in, in here. We're just going to take out the form data and here completed is just. So we got delete to do, which deletes it to do. It's 
takes the idea of the form data and then yeah deletes the to do with this filter this is the equals filter from drizzle uh, with which we can delete or kind of filter out um, some kind of specified a specif specific um, row in the database which is very useful to have that and we have toggle complete which in my opinion was it was the last um, functionality the last logic last thing I implemented um, and it was not the hardest one but one of the hardest definitely and I'm not even sure why so we got toggle complete um, we also retrieved the form data we retrieved the ID I'm going to show the front end from for this uh, in a second so first of all we need to retrieve completed val uh, which is short for completed value await db dot select completed we basically select the to do which has the ID of the form data and then we check we return we get returned a boolean right here true or false and in this case we want to await the db update dot select completed to complete the val zero um this needs to be a boolean because or no this 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 is a bo uh, not a boolean this is an array because there could theoretically be multiple of them i'm not sure why it is because there's a primary key maybe i need to specify dot unique which is also something you can do in drizzle i'm not sure about that and of course then we need to specify where we want to update that so in here we basically got some ternary magic going on here um with we're first of all retrieving if the to do is completed and if it is we gotta make a line through oops right like here and if it is completed we also got this um fa solid or fa regular this is fa regular and this is fa solid if we go to font awesome we got i think it's check it's circle check so we got here we got regular and here we got solid first i wanted to kind of uh, basically ternary and then like do a ternary statement here and then render out a different form but then I was like, hmm, I can also fetch like the um the current like kind of state of the of the to do, then just invert whatever there is already set in the database. So I can yeah, just invert whatever is set on the database and so I don't need to do uh to write two different um functions right here. So yeah. That is basically all that is to say right here. I hope you like this uh, little kind of breakdown video of my to-do app. I would think I will also link this video as an embed in the repository. And of course, I'm going to link the repository down in the description. So definitely go check that out. It's one of my favorite projects to build because it was one of the first times I really um, got to know the technologies, the new technologies, and I really liked it. So that's why. I think it's very cool. So yeah, see you next time.